Hello, is this, um, is this Kaylin? Kaylin, yes, it is Kaylin. How are you, Kaylin? I'm good. You know, you are a hard wizard to get in contact with. I had to call this number like 200 times. You called 200 times, you said? I had to, yeah. It's well, nice, isn't it? Kayla, if you, Kaylin, Kayla, Kaylin, you know what's annoying about your name is that it's so close to being Caitlin, but it's not, and it's not Kayla oh my either. God. It's like something in, you it's like no Kayla idea. and Caitlin divided by two. It's Kayla plus Caitlin divided by two, the average of, of those two, and that bothers me. I wish it was just one of them, but what, what, it, what is it one more time and I'll internalize it forever? Caitlin. Like K A Y L I N K one. So you call two hundred times, and I assume if you call two hundred times, there there is something that that you wanted to talk about. Oh my gosh! So I really just need some petty advice, kind of. Mm-hmm. So I was pregnant. I was dating this boy, and a, a week before I had my baby, he cheated on me and kicked me out. Mm. And so then I was nice enough. I allowed him to be there while I gave birth. And the whole time I laid up all night and watched him Snapchat his new girlfriend back and forth. Oh God. Um, so then he was, so he hold on, pregnant. hold on. So he was, so he was in the room in the hot with a hospital room in the with room you. with me. Yes. With and two feet away was, from me. Take two feet away from you or Snapchat and his new girl. Yes. Did he do and did he do anything to like in any way, shape, or form like help you through the the process of, of, of the, the pregnancy? Oh, we were together the whole pregnancy until a week before I had the baby. Okay. Alright, so um uh, continue, continue with your with your story. So his new girlfriend is pregnant, but it's not his, mm-hmm. it's her husband. So she left her husband the day he left me and moved into his house the day that wow. I finished getting me and my son's stuff out. So, and I've been like trying to think like, I don't know. I feel like I've been really laid back about the whole ordeal. You know, like the pettiest thing I did when I moved out was stole. I He had a bucket of change and I took the bucket of change with me and the living room t- coffee table. But, like, I could have done, and now I just, I don't know. He doesn't do anything to help, and then he wants to sit, and, you know, just, like, he wants to act like he's such a good dad. It just makes me mad. And so I try to piss him off as much as possible, which isn't good, and I shouldn't do that. I know that. You but, say um, you try to piss him off as much as possible. Besides stealing 70 cents and change and uh, a coffee table, like, what like what do day. you do to piss him? What, what other things do you do to try to piss him off? Okay, like, so my son has his last name, and the other day I just texted him out of nowhere. It was like, so I think I'm going to change uh, his last name to mine. It's just little things like that, like I know would make him angry. And are you actually going to do that, or are you just doing that, or are you just telling him no, to piss him off? No, no, I'm just doing it. To, I'm just trying to piss him off. He called me immediately, and I was like, no, nah, I'm not really going to do it. I just want to make you mad. And he's like, you're ignorant. Okay. But okay. I don't know. All I right. just want... I don't know. No, please continue. Oh, that's it. Like, I just I need to know what I can do. Something you say you need know. to know what you can do. So, well, I, you're, I'm hearing from you. You're saying that you feel well, like you you've you. been. Well, I well, uh, this is very interesting to me because you're saying to me that you feel like you've been pretty chill, despite the, you know, craziness of, of the situation. Like, right. Like I feel like I've been. I mean, I try to. I don't know. He just makes me so mad all the time. And I just want, I don't know, I just want to be petty. What kind, what's going on with this dog? My dog? Oh, she's so bad. Her name is Macy. Macy. She's in jail right now. She's in what? She's in dog jail right now. Oh, good. 
She sounds like uh, yeah. she sounds like she did something. I hear her. I hear her barks translating into "I didn't do it," but I know she did. She's so bad. She does everything. She chews up all my son's toys. So, do you feel oh, like you? So, like, so, like, the? Are you conflicted here? Are you like thinking you've been too chill? Yeah, I really have. Like, that's what I feel like. I feel like I've been too chill, and I want to not be too chill. Like. He's been. Uh, why do you hello? Why? Asshole. What do you mean? What do you mean? But why? Why do you say that you want to not be chill? That dog has some lungs. I don't but... know. That's weird. That is a weird thing to say that I don't want to be chill. I don't know. I just feel like being petty. I guess. Um, you feel like being petty. Well, uh, to me, so I feel like. There's a sort of like peace. Well, I, you sound like you're. It sounds like it's it's good that you don't want to be petty, right? Because typically, if you're going out of your way to like get revenge on people or piss people off, it like a lot of it is like at your own expense in a way. Because they're as as people like to say, uh, living in your head rent free. But it doesn't sound like. Uh, sounds like it's a good thing that you've been chill about this situation. Yeah, it is. I don't know. Maybe I'm just angry. Like, is there a place that you could talk with where the where the dog is not there? Yes. Hold on a second. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, it's way better. Hello. Um. Okay. Um, okay, so, so you, um, what, do you, like, want to not be chill? Like, what are you feeling conflicted about? You know, I think today we just had a conversation and it made me really angry. And then, so, like, I was just, I don't know. And so now I'm upset with him and I'm like, I just want to be ignorant. But I'm not really that ignorant of a person. So, like, I can't. Think of, I don't know. You know what I, I'm well, saying? No, I, well, I, 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 I sort of do, but like, I mean, I, I I almost feel like, well, listen, if you're going about your life in a way that is like peaceful for you, I, I don't know why you're, why you feel this desire to, to, to want to be angry, right? Like you're chilling, you got your dog, you got your son, you're like, you're mo- you're sort of I, I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna put words in your mouth and say that you've moved on because I don't know but like you you're you're living your life you're on the path to moving on uh, sounds like fucking faster than a lot of people on average would uh, would do you know so I I um I don't know I think I think it sounds to me like you're handling this in a good way yeah. Yeah, probably, but I don't know. I think I'm just angry today, honestly, at him because I don't know. Because some days I'm just angry at him. Uh, how often do you do you like uh, uh, interact with him? Even um, uh, not very often. Maybe like three or four times a month. Okay. Um. And are you going out and trying to to meet someone new, or are you focusing oh, entirely I have on a the kid? Yes. Oh, so you have a boyfriend have already? A boyfriend. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, well, shit. I mean, you 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 have a new relationship. You got your kid. You got the dog. It sounds like you have like four dogs. I mean, it sounds like you you you're you're sort of like quickly moving up and onwards with your life. I mean, I think that's good, right? Because pettiness, to me, like, being petty and, and going out and seeking revenge just means that, like, the feelings that that you have of rage are, like, you know, still boiling and influencing you. And, and, and you know, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I like the strategy you've taken on with this, you know, just fucking moving on with your life. Yeah. 
Okay, What's I think next maybe really for you, I Kaylin? Think... What's next for me? Uh, I applied to college, actually. That's what's next for me. Perfect. Listen, the best revenge is a life well lived, isn't it? That's true. Well, then keep living life well, Kaylin. Yeah, I think maybe I just needed to talk about it. Beautiful. I know, I feel... It does feel better. Well, um, I hope you, uh, I hope that your dog, uh, I don't know, you get some horse tranquilizer for that guy. <laughs> he definitely needs some. some Do you know you can give dogs, like, it's third, like, vets who, like, prescribe, like, Xanax and weed to dogs. Yeah, actually, so she is super hyper, and no joke, when she was little, she would just, like, randomly wake up at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning and start chasing her tail. So I used to give her Benadryl when I would go to bed. That way she would sleep through the night, which I know sounds terrible. But if not, she would, like... Is that, is that veterinarian recommended? Yeah, dogs can have Benadryl, yes. I don't know. I was just joking when I said to give your dogs Xanax and weed. I have fucking no idea. I don't. I don't endorse. I don't endorse taking my advice on anything about what to give to your dog. <laughs> All right. What are you saying, Emma? Kaylin. Huh? Have a good night, Kaylin. Thank you for calling. You too. Someone in the chat said that it's that it is safe, and uh, I I'm gonna add on to what I said. I don't endorse taking my advice on uh, what to give your dog. Don't endorse giving. Uh, I don't endorse taking the advice of uh, a random Twitch commentator on um, what you should give to your dog. Uh, and um, yeah, I have no idea. Give your dog. Uh, dogs like cheese. I think. Give your dog some Parmesan cheese. Someone asked why I hate dogs. I don't hate dogs. I just hated. I don't hate dogs. I just hated that dog. For a, I hated that dog for that specific period of time for a, a one specific reason. My hatred was very pointed, explained, and specific toward that one dog for that one purpose at that one time. And now that time is over, and the purpose is over, and I'm never going to see that dog ever again. And um, I don't... I don't care what happens to it not in like a bad like i don't I, I don't wish it harm but i don't it's not i'm not gonna follow up to know what happened to it in the future which is fair because why would I? I have no attachment to the dog all right let's take a phone call hello we have bono 28 years old from florida that's me try, i'm trying to do a radio thing but by saying your your age and where you're calling from and your name in like that way mm -hmm. what do you think about that yeah man is this really the gecko yeah, is this really bono yeah it is man that was great to hear you man i've been listening to you every day for eight hours while i do my landscaping on spotify Fuck yeah. and this is Fuck yeah. amazing that you answered and it's my Fuck week vacation yeah. so it makes it even that much better this is your week vacation yeah i took a whole week off for work man Oh, wow. I'm honored to be uh, a part of this valuable time that you're spending. Am I on the speakerphone right now, Bono? Yes, I could take you off. Yeah, take me off the speakerphone. Uh, it's easy to hear you on the speaker. Uh, yeah, there we go. I took it off now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Bono, um, what's going on? Tell me everything. Tell me nothing. Well, I mean, I took a week off vacation. I had a job interview last week. Didn't get the job, but... Happy that I got to talk to you. So, I mean, it's a win-win in my situation and on my vacation. So, uh, couldn't be happier, I guess. Is there uh, anything in particular that you want to talk about, Bono? Um, I mean, there was. Uh, I mean, I was telling my old lady the other day that it was kind of weird how when I was younger, I went to juvie about five or six times, mm -hmm. and ever since I turned eighteen. Um, I'm actually on the opposite side of the law, so now I do, like, security, uh, cut grass, and sell fire. So I thought that was just kind of a weird change that I did. Mm -hmm. So you were in and out of juvie uh, 
I guess I guess that had to have been like over ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was when I was in my younger age. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and do you feel like uh, you you and, sort uh, of was, learned learned a lot from that experience? Uh, yeah. I mean, as I got older, I was like, okay, juvies kind of where you know the younger guys are. I mean, prison is where the big boys are, so you kind of don't want to end up going there. So it's either no, turn your life crazy. around or keep going the big path. So decided to turn it around. Mm-hmm. Um, and you said you went multiple times. You said you went like six times to UV. Yeah, I went first time. I got 14 charges. Uh, still don't know to this day why. My mom has all my paperwork somewhere, so I haven't really got into it. And then mm-hmm. the second time was because I didn't follow the rules, I guess, in probation. So I got sent back again. Uh, third time was just for a different charge that I had. Mm-hmm. So, like, w- when you went to juvie, I'm curious. I know this was a long time ago, and I don't want to just focus on the bad stuff because I want to. I want to sort of like hear about the the flip that you're telling me about right now. How you sort of, you know, got on the o- the other side into security. But um, so you started out. So so apparently, the first couple times you went, was it not? awful enough to like prevent you from ever wanting to go back uh it wasn't that bad because i've been in alternative school when i was younger so i got kicked out of my regular school and went to an alternative school and it was basically mm-hmm. just like a juvie just without the walls i guess so mm-hmm. first two times didn't really affect anything but as i got to the third and fourth i was like uh, i'm getting older the charges are going to be a little bit bigger and they're charging people as adults now. So it's one of those things that you're just going to have to change before it gets worse. There. And so then what set you back for the fifth and sixth time? Um, I guess uh, let's just say I was selling stuff that I wasn't supposed to. So mm-hmm. I ended up getting charged for that. Well, I got kicked out of school first. Right. And got charged for it and then got kicked out of the state. So... Yeah. But so then, oh, you got kicked out of the state. Yeah, the whole state. Um, they gave me 24 hours to leave the state. If I didn't leave, uh, I was either going to go to a foster home for juvie for about a year or two till I turned 18 or adult prison. So I left. The left about two hours later after they told me that. Wow. I didn't yeah, even really know. I didn't even know that you could be banned from a state. Oh yeah, you should have seen how surprised my family was. But I mean, that's the quickest uh, ticket I've ever gotten, and, and I don't like planes, so I kind of don't remember being on the plane half the time because, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I was just too terrified to even realize I was on the plane. Mm-hmm. Were you Were you terrified of being on the plane, or were you terrified of leaving? Uh, uh, being on the plane, I actually wanted to come back to my state because I didn't really like it up there anymore. So I kind of wanted to just come back. It was more of a country life over there where I was instead of being in the city. So I kind of wanted to come back to the city life. Mm-hmm. And are you still banned from this state? How long does this ban last? No, it was just a year ban. So I'm good to go back and forth as I please now but yeah I was pretty shocked that they can actually kick you out the whole state how did your family react uh, when you had to leave um they just told me to go home and pack my bags and get the quickest ticket I can and we left a couple hours later Mm -hmm. so all right so you got kicked out of school and you had to leave the state um, but mm-hmm. you didn't go. You didn't end up going back to juvie. What, what, so what? What did you like? What was your next sort of move after that? Um, basically, I was already getting to that age where you're 18, so uh, charges are not as small as they were when you were a teenager. So right. I decided to take the right path because I didn't want to go to the prison, and that's when I started changing up and doing better. I guess. 
Did you get like a, a a gig of some kind doing something? Did you were you able to like get a GED or go back to school or anything like that? Oh yeah, as soon as I uh, came back, I went to school. I uh, dropped out, and about the same month I dropped out, I got my GED because nowadays you can't really do nothing without a GED if mm-hmm. you didn't have one. So I made sure that was the first thing I did. Mm-hmm. Um, and you said you work in security now, right? Yeah. Um, Work in security, sell firearms, you know, a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and are you enjoying what you're doing now? I uh, wouldn't say enjoying, but I mean, as long as I keep making money, uh, sure. I'll do whatever I need to do. So that keeps me going. To the point of what keeps you going, I'm curious. Like, what what, what would you say are the most prominent motivating factors in your life we know that money is one but but is there anything else that you that that you think is a significant motivating factor for you uh my mother and my younger sister i mean mm-hmm. they've seen it from where i used to be to where I'm now so that keeps me on my toes to keep doing better decisions instead of making bad ones that's nice. Do you still have a have a good relationship with both of them? Oh yeah, I have a great relationship with them. Even though they say I eat a lot, but I don't think I eat a lot. I think it's just I'm hungry all the time. So what I do just you eat? To eat a lot. What do you eat? Uh, my mom's my mom's Mexican, so I basically have like a Mexican restaurant at my house all the time. That's cool. What like what specifically like what kind of Mexican food? <laughs> um, tacos, menudo. Mole, uh, flautas, tamales, basically anything I can ask her to make, she'll make. And I get to eat it the same day. That's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people tell me why I don't go eat at a Mexican restaurant. But I, like I said, why go to a Mexican restaurant if I could just go home? What did you say your name was? Bono? Yep. Uh, Bono, is there anything that you want to say to the people before we go? Maybe maybe something you would say uh, uh, to someone who was in a, a similar position uh, as you when they were younger or uh, or, or, any, or anything at all that you want to say to the people? Yeah, anybody that's doing bad or that feels like um, they're in a bad situation and they can't turn their lives around, uh, you can always turn your life around. You just got to put your mind to it. Uh, you don't always have to be doing the same path. Just to choose a different one and make sure that you're happy and make sure your family's happy. Beautiful. Thanks for calling, Bono. Take it easy. All right, man. Thank you. See you. Someone in the chat said that this paint has to be very bad for my skin. And to that I say, we will find out in a few years. Because I think... I've only been doing this a year and a half, and I don't think that the the paint I don't think it I don't think that the paint attacks in sh- the short term the short term. I think the paint plans ahead and will kill me slowly over a long period of time. So I don't know just yet, but we will see. I feel like I remember reading somewhere that, um, do you, do you know there's no Violent J from the Insane Clown Posse? I don't know if this was like, a, this might have been a fake article, but I remember reading somewhere that he got some kind of, I don't know if it was a cancer or a disease, he, he, something happened to him. Because he was wearing the paint all the time. And if and hey, if that article is fake, then look, if he can do it, I can do it. Potential. Uh, everyone in the chat is like, oh, you got to use... Here's uh, one more thing, and then we'll take phone calls. But ever, this happens all the time. I swear to God, this is always happening. I get on here and I complain about this paint killing me. And then someone will DM me on Instagram or something and be like, Gek, you got to hear the products that you got to use... The, the fucking the primer the 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 
cleansing oil moisturizer thing and I do them for like a day and then I get I get lazy and I stop doing them. How badly do I need to moisturize really? Can I live a successful, happy, fulfilled life without moisturizing? I feel like I can. Hello, is this uh, Colby? Yes, it is. Hello, Colby. Oh, so nice to be on here. I'm glad, you know, I'm, I, 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 I think it's cool that you were able to make that decision after only being on here for a second. You immediately felt like, uh, like it was good to be on here. And I'm, um, that's good, I think. Or I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's too snap of a judgment. Maybe five minutes, for, maybe, I don't know, I don't know. I, I'll shut up. What's your name again? Colby? Yep. What's going on, Colby? So, I came on here to tell the story about when I was like five years old. I went to a Mexican restaurant in Bangor, Maine called Miguel's. Keep I was a very clean. shy kid. I decided, you know what? I need to go to the bathroom, right? Very, very dirty bathroom. Mm -hmm. Me being a shy five-year-old decides to pee all over the floor. All of, when you okay, hold on, okay, okay. When you say you were okay, so you were five years old at a Mexican restaurant. You go to use the bathroom. You go to use the bathroom alone. Your parents don't like take you there. Oh no, it's just how old? Uh, do you, how how old are kids usually when you got to go take them to the bathroom or when they can go on their own? Five five seems kind of young for that. All right, five years old. See, so okay. When you say you peed all over the floor, is it something where you attempted to use the urinal but you failed and you peed on the floor, or you, in the middle of the bathroom, intentionally just went straight for the floor? Well, right at the door. Honestly, it was a very, very dirty bathroom. As I said, it was. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like a gas station bathroom. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I mean, the waiter came up to me, looked at me and my mom and her partner and looked at us and was like, I know what you did. And me being a shy five-year-old, looked back at him and asked, what do you mean? And my mom stuck up for me and like, he didn't Denied. do that. Like, Yes. Yeah, and, but I did. I mean, I don't know if I should be ashamed for that. Hmm. So you denied it and your mother believed you and she joined you in, in your denial. Yeah. Hmm. Did you feel at the time any guilt for bringing your mother into your lie? Honestly, no. I just kind of afterwards continued eating my food. Really didn't think about it at all uh, uh, in any sort of guilt framed way? Honestly, no. And contemporarily, how do you feel about it? Honestly, I don't know how to feel about it now. Now that mm. I have my own kid of my own, you know what I mean? Mm. You have a child of your own now? Yes, I do. And how would you feel if, if you were in a similar situation as your mother with, with your current child? You know, I, I'd stick up for my daughter as well, but afterwards, I don't know how I'd feel, like what I would say to her. Hmm. Well, it, it here's the thing is, kinda... it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you did not pee on the floor intentionally out of malice. Sounds like you peed on the floor out of like some sort of maybe it was shock. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what what like propelled the pee out of your body, but it was. It feels like it was like an involuntary emotional response to something more than it was a uh, an act of malice. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, I didn't just do it to do it. I right. didn't want to walk any further into the bathroom. Mm. What was the uh, name of this uh, restaurant? Uh, it was Miguel's in Bangor, Maine. Is it still there? Yes. Go back there. Stand by the bathroom. And next time somebody pees in there on the floor you bring a rag you clean it up yourself 
You clean up piss in that bathroom once, and then you're done forever. Your your debts have been repaid. But you got to go back there and you got to clean up someone's piss, just to sort of. Huh. Or I never thought of doing that. You got to find the owner of the restaurant and let their kid piss in your mouth. That no, that's too far. You don't have to do that. <laughs> But you could. I kind of feel like it's one of those acts that was just kind of frowned upon. You know what I mean? Like masturbating on a plane. I also, th- I also think it would be very frowned upon. What's your name again? Colby. Colby, thank you very much for calling. Hello, Dinkus. Hello. How are you, Dinkus? So, um, my calling topic probably isn't too good now about uh, your rant about how much you hate dogs. I didn't go on a... Dude, you... All right. Clearly, nobody was listening to... I was very... I never said I hate dogs. I like dogs. I just said I hated, like, that specific dog for that... I no longer hate that dog, by the way. But I just hated that dog for that specific time, for that specific... Reason did that? Did that not? Did, did I not make my? I feel like I made myself pretty clear. I feel like. No, you did. I'm sorry. It's my. I, I did I'm that sorry. when I, you were talking about it. When you were talking about it, I had the feeling of, uh, you were going to pick my call, for comedic bits. You thought I was going to pick your call for comedic bits. I'm sorry. I I drank a bunch of whole milk before the stream, so I'm a little amped up. Tell me, tell me what you wanted to talk about. Um, why I called in is uh, tomorrow I have to put down my dog, and mm. I don't know. I don't know if advice is the right question because you know advice about what, but I guess I don't know just how to process that. I guess mm. looking mm. for information with that. Mm. How old, how old is your dog? Uh, 11 and a half. 11 and a half. What kind of dog is it? A uh, golden retriever. Oh. What, what's their name? Maggie. Maggie. Yeah, Maggie. so they get... um, Golden retrievers, for some reason, get, like, tumors really bad. So... Mm. um. She now is like, she's been doing fine. And then all of a sudden, like she's not eating and she has a bunch of tumors and stuff. So I think, uh, tomorrow is the day, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a golden retriever too. I love golden retrievers. See, I don't hate dogs. I I hated that dog, but I don't hate dogs in general. I love golden retrievers. They're good dogs. They're very active. They're very sweet. They're very affectionate dogs. Mm-hmm. How would you describe what's the, Maggie uh, as what's a dog? the name of the dog you hate? The name? I don't know. I don't even... I don't hate them enough to know their name. I'm over it. Completely. Oh. Tell me more about Maggie. What, what, what is Maggie like? Um, well, she used to be um, very hyper and would run around and stuff and... Mm-hmm. You know, typical dog stuff. Now she just uh, pisses and shits everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's where we but all her uh, her bodily functions no longer end work. up anyway. I had a dog. Um, yeah, I had a right. My I had a gold. I had a golden retriever that died as well. Her name was uh, was Jessica. And um, mm, sorry, I remember she. Uh, Shortly before she died, I watched her take a full shit on her own leg. And that's, it's not, I don't think that's a place where anyone wants to be. Yeah, it's just, sucks for, you know, like humans, it takes 80 years to get to that, but you watch a dog Mm -hmm. in this lifespan of 10 years, you know. Do you um 
Now, this dog, do you own the dog with anyone, like a partner or like, uh, or is it just you and the, the dog? Uh, I got the dog when I was a kid. And then, mm -hmm. um, so it's been at my parents since that's where I lived. And then mm -hmm. I just bought a house. And so I didn't bring her with me because. I knew this point was coming sometime this year, so to mm -hmm. then upend everything that she's used to and be like, oh, we're right. living here for three months and then die. So she's um, right. she's with my parents right now. Okay, okay. And how um, how are your parents? How are your parents feeling? Do they also um, have as, as strong a connection to the dog as you do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my... Um, my mom is the one who kind of brought it up, you know, since for these last few months I haven't been there, that, you know, she thinks now is the time. Mm. So it's not just my call I'm making, so it's kind mm. of a, a joint call. Right. I mean, that's that that it's, you know, I, uh, you know, all the circumstances considered. It is um it is nice to be able to celebrate uh, the life of your dog alongside other people who also cared about Maggie. Mhm. Mm hmm. Um and you guys said you're going tomorrow. Yeah, um cuz what it is is she's been off and on and you know she's very sick, but at the same time there's been weeks to a month where she's been perfectly healthy and happy or act at least acting healthy. Um, but the last three days she hasn't eaten at all. And then, uh, so we called the vet and she said that, um, if she doesn't eat by the third day or I got tomorrow will be the third day that she hasn't eaten. And if she hasn't eaten by then, it's kind of a sign, mm -hmm. which it's been, a, it's been downhill, uh, for close to a year or two years, so. Do you but, uh, now? This, I this... went over. I was trying to please. Yeah, I was trying to like give her cheese and stuff, and mm -hmm. like all the stuff she normally would eat, she has no interest in. Mm -hmm. Have you um sort of taken? Uh, have you have you have you reflected on um? I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe nice memories that you have, that you have had with Maggie. Anything in particular that you want to share? Uh, well, last year, uh, we kind of knew, like she was, she started getting bad last year, like real bad. Sure, sure. And so, um, when we went to the beach, we took her with us and that was, I mean, she lives in my backyard other than not lives out there all the time. I'm just saying she she spends most of her time very, in our backyard other than... She has a very limited time, uh, so. uh, travel experience, as most yeah. dogs do. Yeah, so I guess, you know, from her perspective, knowing that there's an ocean and a beach is probably surprising and weird. So mm. that was kind of like a nice last thing to do. Even though it was a year yeah, and a half ago, oh. that's interesting, right? Because you, uh, you almost like, I like the way you're talking about that. Like, you know, your dog is a very limited worldview, only to like your backyard. But then they're like, oh, there's a whole ocean and beach and yeah. stuff. I almost, I almost, I almost feel like, uh, I almost feel like that every time I go to the beach, you know, because we're all spending all of our time in our fucking. Rooms and offices and caves and shit. You get to go out. You're like, oh, there's a hole. We're all, we're all we're all kind of dogs too, in a way. Um, you know, we all uh, live sedentary lives and then shit ourselves and, and die. And people stand around talking about us dying and when we'll die, and then it actually happens. That's true. Does that feel? Do you feel weird talking about your the fact that your dog will die around the dog? Um, I wouldn't say so. I mean, she was right there uh, today when I was talking about it. 
Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, she's just, she's not doing good at all. Like when I was petting her, she kind of just now feels like a skin with a sack of bones in it. (laughs) If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's a gross description, but it's a little, it's a little gross, but she's still a good dog, you know, Maggie. Yep. What's her name again? Uh, Dinkus. Dinkus. Um, Dinkus. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't give you any uh, advice because I don't necessarily, necessarily know, but um, hmm, is because there is. Dogs. No, I don't hate dogs, Dinkus. I love dogs. No, uh, I have a dog. I have a golden retriever. I have two gold. I have two golden retrievers. One of them died. One of them took a shit on her leg Not and then died it. right after. But I like dogs. I love dogs. No, I love I, I your dog, it. dude. I love your dog. I'm proud to hear that she had a wonderful time at the beach. I'm proud of you for giving her a good life. You take some time. You take some time in these next few days when you're reflecting on the life of this dog. You give yourself a pat on the back, Dinkus, for all the good work you've done to give that dog a good life. You feel good about that. You reflect. You think about her life. You feel good about her life. She had a good life. You gave one to her. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. I hope I hope that as, as, as you're bathing in the reflection of... Of of your dog's life, of 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 what she meant to you, you're you're almost given this like. I don't I don't I don't know how you would say it, but this this rejuvenation for all the all the various joys in your life, not just the joy that this dog gave to you. You're like, oh, maybe I should, you know, appreciate the the sky while I can still see it, or my 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 parents while I can still see them. You know, I hope I hope it gives you a greater appreciation for all the other things that are bringing you joy in your life. Um, That's a great point. You know, so 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 thank you very much for calling Dinkus and um, and. Can uh, I say something uh, real quick? Of course, you can say something real quick. Um, you might ignore this question. That's fine, and do that thing where you say <clears throat> good night, Dinkus. And We've had too sincere me. a conversation for me to do that now. I would normally do that, but we're, that we've had we're at a sincere point now where if I did that, it wouldn't come off as funny. I would just look like a dick. So, I, I um, hear your well, question. it's very it's very off it's very off topic. Oh sure. Is there a chance that you will ever do a uh, an H three team up again for Collins? If uh, if uh, I mean look, if he ever calls me, I you know, I'll come on anytime that they that they want me to come on, you know. Hmm. All right, I just figured I'd ask because I was curious. So, now I, was I don't hate dogs. I hated that one. Do- I explained myself already. I refuse to do it again. I love dogs. I love your dogs. No, no I, I love I said, you. I said now is the chance. I didn't say you hate dogs. I b- fully believe you love dogs. Dinkus. Yep. Thank you for calling. Much love to you. Have a good rest of the night. Hello, is this Joshua? Yes, it is. What's going on, Lyle? Uh, what's up, Joshua? How you doing, man? Good, man. Uh, just walking back from the store. What'd you get? Um, I had to, unfortunately, use the restroom up there. You had to use the restroom at the store. What's wrong with your restroom at home? Man, so my apartment complex are kind of old. Sorry, a car is passing. <laughs> my apartments are kind of old, and the septic tank kind of got backed up, and for the last four days, I haven't been able to use the restroom in no form mm. or fashion, unless I want to pretend to be a plumber. Get the plunger, everything, Drano, and go at it. A little elbow grease. At what point does it, I mean, how far away is the store? Uh, from your house. I'm where you've walking been up to my door now. Oh, okay. it's um, well, it's like a two minute walk. A two minute walk. Right, how? At what point does it become more efficient for you in terms of your uh, energy to just fix the toilet? Well, see, I live in an appoint- apartment complex, so I have to complain to the office, and they're like, "Well, we come little, use the hose and put it in there and drill it out, but it's the whole complex, so they're just kind of." Postponing fixing the whole septic system. 
Oh, wait, so the septic system is fucked for the whole apartment complex. Absolutely. Wow. And how long has it been fucked? Four days? About four days. How is there not rioting going on at the fucking office? Man, <laughs> Man so, like, as of, as of this morning, I literally going door to door. I'm walking in my house now. I started going door to door like, is your toilet fucked up? Is your toilet You're fucked building up? a fucking no, sorry, militia to go tear down the, uh, the the apartment complex office and get that shit fixed. Exactly. Like, we we need some free rent and we need to be able to shit when we want to shit. Yeah, dude. No, literally, get everyone. Here's what you do. You get everyone to go out. You get everyone. Like, you like okay, Wednesday, 5 p.m. We all take a shit in the middle of the hallway. They can't evict oh all of us God. at once if we do that that's strength in numbers that's the next level Lyle. that's the next level you're I already going right. around campaigning for the for the your cause i feel like that's the only way you're going to get them to really pay attention joshua and, bone, son. and the, the and your fucking baby. smoke detector needs batteries oh that, oh, that was my son i'm sorry Oh, I thought it was a smoke detector. My son came in and yelled, Hey, Dada! Dude, you hold, but you yeah, take no, a shit, ahead. you hold your son, you in, you take off his diaper, you shit with your son in the middle of the hallway? Ah, it would be so... right. Yeah. Yeah. How's he Big doing? Bung, man. Uh, he's good. He's great. He, we went to the park today. We've been playing. He's been on his tablet. But, you know, he shits in a diaper, so he doesn't feel my pain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, wait a minute. What do, you, what do you do with the diapers? You don't you don't flush them in the toilet, do you? You just throw them away? Oh, no. See, yeah, I have a dumpster. Like, it's not too far from my house. Take them out there, put them in a bag, diaper genie, stuff like that. Um, do you feel do you as though... and what he, is, uh, No, what is a diaper genie? It's like, um... So it's like a little container where you put all, it's like has a scented bag and you put all the diapers in there so it doesn't make your house smell like shit. And then you take one bag out, it holds like 30 diapers in it at one time. Oh, it's a scented, I, well, I'm familiar with the concept of a scented garbage bag to make the garbage less yeah, yeah. scented. Same thing, it just has like a latch and it holds up the diapers and whatnot. Mm. It's just made specifically diaper for genie. diapers. Diaper Genie. Do I detect a podcast sponsor somewhere in the future? Oh, look at us. Diaper Genie's Sorry, on the way. It's not I'm a brand, though. It's just like a concept. Money and power. Yeah, it's not a brand. It's just a concept. Um, so, okay. So, uh, Joshua, aside from the fact that you have to go... Actually, I'm curious. Has the store noticed a... Strong influx of people mm -hmm. coming to use its toilets from your apartment complex. Well, see me, see me. I live so close and I go there so frequently. I told him, I'm like, hey, twin, toilet's fucked up. Got to use the restroom. And he's like, you're the third person today. And I'm like, oh, my God. So he definitely noticed it. Definitely well, I mean, well, every single person in your apartment's got to go use his fucking toilet. Somewhere it's like it's only like two it's two gas stations and a Dairy Queen. Everything else you have to drive to. Oh my god, that Dairy Queen bathroom is probably fucked. <laughs> it's <laughs> fucked. How many people do you love? Oh, so my you... girlfriend's in the uh, uh, it's my girlfriend and my son, and she's watching the stream in the other room. And she heard me mention the Dairy Queen bathroom, and since she's been having mm -hmm. to go, she's like, "Yeah, it's definitely gross." Well, does she go with you to take a shit? Is it almost like a date? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say a date, but it's definitely we gotta try to plan the trips at the same time, so we're not just alternating trips, you know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, let me ask you: Is this the worst thing that's going on in your life right now? Um, yeah. Just not being That's able pretty to good. Shit. That's yeah, pretty good. Bills, bills are caught up. Son's fed. Girlfriend's happy. Dog's chilling. Um, got a good job. Well, a decent job, you know, so just can't shit. 
You just can't shit. Well. And like I told your call representative, I really kind of was in an upset mood because I really had to go. And then, like, I called 60 times on my girlfriend's phone and 40 times on my phone. And then it finally went through and my day changed around. Did, did, wait, so are you telling me that you had to take a shit at the beginning of this call, but then you got so engrossed in the call that you forgot you had to take a shit? No, when I, I walked to the store, and then I came right, back, I and you caught me walking from the store. Okay. i sorry, I thought I did something. Yeah. So, so on hold, I was in the shit at some point. You were in the sh- Were you prepared, uh, uh, were you prepared to have this conversation Absolutely. while you were on the toilet? Absolutely. I was okay. going to be like, but I didn't want to feel contradicted because I didn't want to be like, uh, my toilet's not working, but I'm sitting on the toilet right no, now. No, you would have you had, know? I would have allowed so, you to explain yourself. I, I, yeah, I know you would because I listen to your podcast while I'm at work. So I, I do understand that. You do give everybody a fair chance, even if they don't understand the question or whatever, to explain themselves. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, do you ever listen to it while you're uh, taking a shit? Um, Yes. Sometimes, like, if I'm at work and I'm moving the boxes, man, it's like, oh, I got to take a shit. I don't stop the podcast. I keep it rolling. That's awesome. Joshua, um, Joshua, I appreciate your your, uh, your kind words and your listenership. And uh, do, you have any, do you have anything else that you want to say before we go to the people? Um, no. Chat, you guys are awesome. Um, thank you, Lyle. You're awesome. Keep doing what you do, Gek. Beautiful. Talk to you soon, Josh. Oh, hey, Bing bong. What's up? Bing bong, my guy. B- Bing bong, dude. I don't know what that means, but I'm sign- I'll am i sign off on it. James? Yeah. James? How's it going? Yeah. It's going good, man. Yes, sir. Um, um, it's going good. Why is it going so well? What's what's so good about it? Um, I'm, I'm just enjoying myself. How's it going for you, Gek? Uh, it's going pretty well. We've had a really good night of calls. Um, I've been enjoying the whole the whole damn thing. Um, am I on the speakerphone by chance? Um, you're not on speakerphone, but I had you on Reddit while I was watching you. So now you're mm-hmm. you're just on my AirPod. It's just me and you. Um, just so what's going on, James? Not much, man. I actually started up a video game to play while I was waiting. But uh, you hit me up in the middle, so here I am with you. Is there uh, anything in particular that you wanted to talk about? So my issue, um, I spoke to the individual on the phone, was I yes. recently became a manager um, of a bar. Mm-hmm. And um, I never had an issue while I was bartending or serving in a restaurant with talking to people but since i became a manager um i'm kind of timid about it um i don't know if it's the responsibility that is expected of me um or what but uh i i just i i don't feel like myself going up to people and talking to them like i i don't feel comfortable doing it before i did now i don't um so i was wondering if it, it's an anxiety issue, which I've never had before in my life, or what what could be going on? So I was wanting a second opinion and seeing if you could help me out with it. Hmm. So this is interesting. So you <laughs> were well, no, I it, you know it's funny you say that because um, I used to th- like uh, uh, th- throw illegal. Uh, bar. I used to like run an illegal bar out of my fucking basement, and I felt like the man when I was there. I felt like it was way easier to talk to people because I was like, you know, because you're the guy in charge. It's, it's, you know, it makes you feel like uh, you belong there. Whereas, you know, if I were just like a patron at a bar, I'm like, you know, fucking wouldn't wouldn't talk to anyone. So it's interesting to me that you're feeling sort of an opposite feeling that's that's very interesting to me so tell me all right so when you were just a bartender you weren't a manager and by the way are you no, a, sir, a do you own this do you own this establishment now or are you just a manager no, sir. So, so, so it's a it's a corporate owned establishment it okay. recently became corporate within the past few years 
um, within the past four months, I believe, or four or five months given, um, I became a manager from a bartender. Um, I bartended for eight years before that, and I've been in the industry for 14. Um, so this is like brand new to me, like straight up, never done it before, brand new type stuff. But before I never had an issue. Now it's kind of, if, if there's, there's a problem with the table, I'm like, uh, you sure you don't want somebody else to go to it? <laughs> and, and like in any other instance, I was always the first person, like I would, I would deal with the, the problem. So you said that when you were a bartender, when you were just a bartender, you weren't a manager. Um, did yeah, you yeah. feel? Did you feel? Okay, I want you to rank. You okay between <laughs> you as a patron at a bar, you as a bartender at a bar, and you uh-huh. as a manager of a bar. Who is? Wh- wh- where would you rank those f- in one to three from outgoingness? Um, outgoingness, I would say, um, actually being a bartender would be number one. Okay. Um, second would be, uh, a patron at a bar mm-hmm. and bullshit. Third the manager. Three would be the actual, actual manager. Yes. So crazy to me. Okay. So then, all right. So, so yeah. then this is interesting to me because that, that you put patron, that you put working at the bar above the patron because... Tell me what is it about being the bartender that actively gives you, uh, let's call it confidence. So, so being the bartender, I I don't necessarily say it would be confidence, but it would be that, um, you you have to come before me before you come before anybody else. So if mm-hmm. I tell you no. If I'm cutting you off, if, if say the get comes to my to my bar, and you've had too many Woodfords, I'm telling you no. Right. And you keep going on and on with me. I'm telling you no. It's an authoritative and position. They, authority, exactly, exactly. And I'm not used to it. I, this, sure. This is never. I've never been in that authoritative position. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to. Um, m- not, I wouldn't say mentally, but I don't know how to uh, process that. So you, well, well, no, I'm, I'm saying that being the bartender, in a way, is is an mm-hmm. authoritative position because you, you know, you cut people off oh, yeah. and you, you'll feel as though you are in command of the place. But now, as a manager, you like actually are in command of the place. Does that like give you anxiety? This is so. I don't know. This is so like. It's hard to crack because it feels so counterintuitive. <laughs> it it is it's foreign to me as well. That's why I uh, figured I'd give you a call. Do you um, feel like there's? Do you feel like there's like more pressure on you now? Yes. Yes. Most okay. Definitely. Maybe that's it. Um, I I came I came from an establishment before I, the place I'm working at. I came from an establishment to where. As a bartender, I would have to call the cops, like, at least once a weekend. Um, it was a given. To now, I'm kind of in a nicer, kind of upscale um, type of environment. Sure, yeah. And it's... Uh, Interesting. I, I think it's kind of messed with my head a little bit. Um, and, and I can't... I can't figure out how it's messed with me. I, I know it's there, but I can't process it in my head that this is why, or this is this is the reason this is going on. And that's kind of that's kind of what's thrown all of this off. And I want to be great at what I do, but um, it's throwing a wrench in it. So you're not new as you said to the industry you've been here you know for years and years and years but are you new to this sort yeah. of uh upscale establishment is this your first time working in what you would consider an upscale an upscale establishment yes sir you're you're correct um for probably about maybe a that's and it um yes and and see that that's kind of what i thought as well so um 
I went and sure, but I never would like, so I started the establishment as a server, became a bartender, um, put me through management training and, uh, like throughout the whole process, I was like, this is freaking awesome. Like I, I had confidence. I felt great in myself until they sent me back to the store I was going to be at. And then once I got back to the store, it was kind of like I hit my head into a wall. It was like, damn, th this is completely a different environment than I envisioned. Mm. You know, I feel like, and I don't know, this could be a load of shit, but I feel like, you know, I mean, well, well, look, well, look at it like this, right? You've been in the industry for, what, 15 years? And you said you've been working mostly at uh, CD sort of places where you would always have to call the cops. Uh, when you first, sh like right. when you were, when you first showed up, whatever, when you were 18 or whatever the fuck, uh, at yeah. one of these places to be a bartender, were you mm -hmm. not s sort of having to deal with and adjust to this, to this environment? Dude, I, I, my first month bartending, no shit, I Googled how to talk to people. So I Googled what, what I should be doing as a bartender. I figured out you talk about the news, you, mm. you talk about sports, you talk about, mm. you talk about non, non-confrontational stuff. And I would, I would sit there before I went to work every day, I would read non-confrontational stuff so I could have something to talk to people about. Like um, local news so stories? It, it, uh, no, not, not necessarily local, but local, national, weather, sports, all that. Um, just because I didn't, I, I wasn't acclimated to being a bartender and actually having people right there in front of me like I, I was used to being a server and i would i would take your orders walk away wouldn't have anything to do with you being a bartender i would i'd, I'd be there in front of you i would always yeah. have shit to do in front of you so i'd always if, if you wanted to talk to me i'd have to be there so so i looked this stuff up and every single day before i went into work i would i would do research and i mean for like three or four months um until i got the confidence to not not to have to do this so that's where the anxiety part comes into is that i was thinking that it comes from that or it stems from that issue um and but i've never had that issue before in my life mm. so that that's what kind of throws me off you have to google how to so. talk to rich people <laughs> see if is you get any other been? responses See what Google has to say about that. Rich people, you, you know, I I I wouldn't say you're you're too off, too far off there. Um, if you throw old in the mix, that would that would be a hundred percent like on point. Well, I get well. So I mean, to like to throw it back to the reason I was <laughs> I was originally asking is like you know okay when yeah. you when you were eighteen you were like you were googling how to talk to people like you were you were you were clearly mm -hmm. like you know. In, in a brand new environment that you were adjusting to, but then you know x, x amount of years later you you adjusted to the environment, you know, and then you're you yeah, became a pro. Yeah, yeah, and I believe way. that you know, I mean, it sounds to me like this is a brand new sort of position for you. I believe that as yeah. time moved on, you you became uh, more socially apt in in this. Uh, like seedy environment, as you say, you became comfortable with that, and then you're in a new environment, so you're naturally going to be uncomfortable. But you know, as as yes, you've already proven, you will naturally over time. Uh, I th I think, at least from from what you've told me, uh, acclimate to that new environment. Okay, I would think. Oh yeah, I'd, in, see in, what Google no, has I to say. That so seems to, like it worked for you the first time. <laughs> and and I don't necessarily want to just jump to Google. That that was I mean when no, I was I'm in just, college joking, that was but... kind of I no no I most definitely. But that was my first first instinct, to be honest. Um now that I'm in my thirties, I'm kind of 
kind of like I, I need to like are my people skills wearing thin or what's going on? No, I don't think your people. No, this doesn't. No, look, I don't think your people skills are wearing thin be- because it. You're just in a new environment, dude. Like, like, like. I don't know. That has to. Be, that has to be it, right? Like, uh, maybe yeah. it's not, but. But as we've talked and explored the different possible variables, if I had to pick yeah, one based on the information you give me, it sounds like you're just in a new environment. I mean, again, there, there there are infinite variables, but that sounds like it's the one. Because if you're telling me that when you're in other environments, you're feeling socially apt and, you know, it, it sounds like that's the right variable. So, so what would you say your name was again? Uh, James. 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 James, do you have any, any final things that you want to say before we go? Um, no, sir. I just appreciate you um, taking my call, and you look For extra sure. green today, bro. Oh, thank you, extra man. That's green. the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> yes, sir. I know it is. <laughs> Beautiful. Talk to you soon, James. Good luck. All right, brother. Take care of yourself. Have a uh, happy Christmas. Call from Jeremy. Je- Jeremy. Jeremy. What's up, Jeremy. Hey, what's up, guys? How are you? I'm doing good. It's uh, 4 a.m. in Germany. That's where I am. You're in Germany? Are you German? Yeah. No, actually, I'm from uh, Washington State, but I've been here for since 2004. I'm just uh, an insomniac. Wait, you've been there since 2004, and you still have an American phone number? Yeah, hey, Google Voice. Oh. Oh, he has Google it's, Voice. It's, it's free. It's awesome. Shit, my wow, what are you doing in Germany? To me. Shut up. Uh, I'm, I'm a translator. <gasps> so you speak fluent German? Oh, yeah. He better, dude. Tell us something I, in German. Uh, Our cousin was Deutsch. in Germany. She was in Germany. Yeah. We had a cousin in Germany for a while. But I don't yeah, think she's there that, anymore. How was, how was that working out for you guys? It's working out really well. We it, never working. went to Germany once to visit her. It's so. working out for us as much... It's working out for us very neutrally. Yeah, it really <laughs> isn't working out either way. It's fine. Um, but she doesn't live there anymore, so the conversation was mute. We were just trying to connect to you. you know, How do you say really gecko in German? That's Gekko not one I'm 100% sure on. That's <gasps> what do you mean you're a translator? Like is word. what you're saying. How do you not gecko know gecko how to say word. lizard? Can you say lizard? I don't. Lizard. I dex it. What? Lizards are more common. I don't. I don't talk about geckos. I do stupid translations about like product manuals and like how to like re- well, insert part A into like slot B and shit. <laughs> so, but you've never had a conversation with anyone about like animals. This is gecko, I believe. I, I, that's what is? Li- how about lizard? What is it's lizard? Idex it. Idexon. Idica. Hmm. Idica. Idica. <laughs> or exa. Hmm. Exa. Idica. Exa. exa. I don't know. I don't, think, a, I don't think we've said okay, okay, okay. one portion of that correctly. It's it's good. I think it's exa. I think it's exa. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, we sound like fucking idiots. Uh, what's up, Jeremy? What do no, you no. want to tell us about? <sighs> Absolutely nothing. I'm just uh, watching you guys. I thought I'd call in. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm thinking. Uh, what do you think about just Germany? Because we were sort of. On this topic beforehand, what do you think about Germany as a place to abandon your current life and start a new one? Well, so I did. I moved here when I was 21. Been here, I'm like, like I said, it's what I did. I have like more, more or less no contact with the U.S. at this point, and it's cool. Wow. None. So you didn't know anyone when you went over there? Well, uh, it's a long story, uh, but yeah, I, I worked, moved here to work with the band. To the the website. band. Mm-hmm. Any band we know? Rammstein. Rammstein. What kind of music does <laughs> yeah. Rammstein? What kind of music does Rammstein do? Uh, Star? Industrial metalish pop stuff, more or less. But industrial, industrial metalish pop. pop stuff. What's industrial metal? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that metal well, like a- music had different types of. Um, is there electrical? Um, metal well, yeah, you got you got the, and you got the heavy, metal. Heavy, heavy, heavy guitars, the distorted stuff. You got the deep. German Is there manufacturer? Uh, and then you got the, and then you got the the, the keyboards. What? 
Sorry, last bit. Last bit. No, I'm just being stupid. Um, <laughs> it's a, so I wouldn't worry too much about what I had to say. Rammstein. Rumst- Damn, so you went there when you were 21 to work yeah. with a band. How did you even connect with this band? Yeah. Did you know German I, before I did, you went there? I, I, I mean, uh, oh yeah, I did three years in high school, which is apparently enough for me. <laughs> How did you connect with the band? I I, uh, I found them. Uh, do you know? It's a long story, but I, I basically I, I made a fan page when I was in high school. <gasps> you and were a super fan of Rammstein. Wow! So you made a yeah. fan page when you were in high school. Um, I made a fan page for them. <laughs> and they just f- f- what? Like what was the wait when you were in high like, school? You, how you old were like, you? Like sixteen. I was 60, yeah, and like I would uh, like post like the track listing to the new album before it was supposed to be posted. <laughs> Interesting. So, okay, so you were 16. You got this crazy. You're like the president of the Rubstein fan club. How <laughs> did the? How did they first make contact with you? What did they like? Well, it's shit. Like, how, how can you... you take that offline? God damn it! Oh, really? So when they first messaged you, they were pissed <laughs> off. Oh, that's funny. Well, uh, and now, then you work yeah. with them. Do you still talk to them? Was, Do you still uh, keep up with them? No, I mean, it's been at least 10 years since I was really actively involved in any way. <laughs> Are they still together? Yeah, that's what I to ask. Yeah, they're still, they're still putting stuff out. Rammstein. That's just, that's just how I got here. Later. That's my word story. That's so that interesting. Great, that's Hold like... on, I really, I really need to close the gap here because between... Because <laughs> I'm still not closed for me. Before we move on to yeah. this call, I need to close the gap between 16-year-old kid running fan page to... Five years later, just, moving to Germany yeah, yeah. to work with the band. Well, <laughs> again, not so long story, but I had basically got, I was in contact with them and they would take, ask me to take stuff offline or whatever. Um, but we had a sort of working relationship. Like we knew each other sort of. The, the, the management and me, not the band uh, directly. Um, and then I just said, hey, uh, would you guys maybe have a job for me in Berlin? And they're like, uh, okay. And then I came here. Basically, it was like a shitty kind of internship, <laughs> hardly paid for anything. And a year later, they're like, yeah, we don't really need a webmaster anyway because the internet's a fad. <gasps> the internet you know, is such fair, a they, fad. They, they, I know. And they so then they just, they, just, they didn't anyway, upgrade you into a full-time job, fair. but then there you were in Germany. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you were just like, I'll stick around. I, just, I pivoted to translation because I was already doing that with them anyway. And I speak wow. the good wow. German. That's very interesting. Story. That is a so very again, interesting not a topic of conversation story. for me. Um, wow, Jeremy. Wow, that uh, the, you know that other, what, that kid who Jeremy wanted to be a Germany. monk. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> that's an inspiring story for him. You know, because he's in fucking yeah. whatever college stuff, and he could just go to Tibet, become a monk, find out being a monk sucks, but that Tibet is sick, and just hang out there for. Yeah, man. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, until he's dead. Not everything in Germany works out perfectly, but so far it's working good for me. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Jeremy. You have a good rest of the night. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Every weekend goes on the